And welcome back to Flo's Sports Fix on this very special occasion where I'm posing a question to our two sporting gurus, the Flo Man and the Stab Man. Gentlemen, thank you for coming into the studio. Thanks, Sorry, I was looking over my shoulder when you said sporting gurus. <laughs> yes. You got me and Flo Man, I hope that's okay. Yeah, well, that's the, the, you're the only two here that I was okay, referring right. to. Yeah. All right. In all seriousness, I've been mm. posing this question to you privately, and I really want to get you two of you together to get the answer to this. It's a question, we've talked about it, Jace, you did some articles over on the Air Peninsula. We know it's going to affect right across our flow broadcasting network, and that is basically how can we save country football? Mm. Is reducing the numbers, the, it could be an option because all these towns, their numbers are reducing. What is the effect, not just for juniors, but for seniors and the two of them together? Travelling, I've said to you before, I don't see the point in travelling 300 k's to play a game of footy even though when years ago when I played soccer, that's what we did. But mm. this is now. So what is our answer? What is a solution? Flo Man, I will start with you. Well, I think we've seen the um, demise of a lot of the small country towns, and so therefore playing football used to be that uh, game where you took the um, side up the road on. They were uh, 25, 30 kilometres away, maybe 50k at the max, and it was a rivalry thing. Everyone moved, the town went with it. Uh, It felt like uh, the big Saturday, you talked about it at school, kids went to the same high school maybe, and as a result, it had that folklore about it when our competitions were more numerous, when we had more people living in our country towns and so forth. We've seen uh, even churches close in recent days uh, in country towns and closed up. Uh, We've uh, seen shops uh, get closed. We've got just the pub open in some places left. Uh, Maybe if you're lucky you could get a roadhouse if there's a a main highway through that location. So what we've now got is a really big change in demographics and it's forcing competitions to relook now. It looks like authorities are saying what we're going to do is amalgamate teams together and we're going to keep competition going. We're going to get four grades of football. We're going to have seniors, reserves, um, under-17s, under-14s in general terms across our legs, whether it's in Victoria, New South Wales or South Australia. That has given rise now to the problem that uh, we've got teams now travelling extraordinary distances to play, but there's not really the rivalry left in those extraordinary travelling uh, situations. I mean, rivalries are built up over decades of, you know, my grandfather played for them against them and, yeah. and so forth. We, we've now amalgamated everybody down into you know, 8, 10, 15 in the case of Owen United, the Kangas in the, uh, n- you know, the, the northern part of the Mallee of Victoria. Yeah. 41 sides have come together to form one side. I think now we've got to go back to the drawing board and say that the game in regional areas maybe needs to change in terms of the numbers that we have per side. I know that the reserves are playing with 16. In some comps, we've had juniors play with 14. I think that's a very real way of going about it. With the demise of competitions in the last couple of years, we've seen the Mallee in Victoria. It went, um, and then we've now seen the Midwest and South Australia. They've both gone. I just think that we've got to go back to the drawing board and say that we need to get uh, 12 to 14 people people on the park, modify the rules like AFL was doing with AFL X, um, come yeah. up with a competition that can be played yeah. in regional areas uh, and keep um, as many rivalries as we can get going. Now, I know a lot of people are going to turn around and say, but hang on, Wayne, I, I want to play the real deal. I want to be, my kids want to be getting prepared for yeah, a NFL one day. I want to one day my kids going to play for the AFL and play for one of the clubs. But I think somewhere along the line, we've got to modify how many players we need each weekend, maybe even get rid of uh, a grade uh, like the reserves. But at least minimum is go back to 12 to 14 players. Uh, We can do that quite regularly uh, and do that with goals being moved in at one end of the ground. Modify that, keep the game going as long as possible with as many towns represented and those rivalries as possible. Interesting thoughts there, reducing the numbers. Statman, do you agree? No. Uh, if I've got time, I'm not sure Flowman could have taken any more of the time for the segment. <laughs> Would you like another five minutes to uh, to go through that, Wayne? I kept on talking so that you didn't get any time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you how you fix this. Um, well, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the timekeeper and we're not even in time on yet, okay, so you're fine. fine. Uh, B grade has to go. The reserves, it's oh. time. Yep. Uh, mm. Put a line through it and I'll tell you why. Uh, You touched on it, both of you touched on it a little bit, actually. This isn't just a problem that senior football is having. It's particularly an issue with the the Colts side of things and Mm. the senior Colts. Now, senior Colts, we have issues in numbers there for a couple of different reasons. One, people are having smaller families than perhaps was the case 50 years ago. wasn't a case of one for mum, one for dad, one for the country back then. 
my grandparents had nine siblings yeah. um, in mm-hmm. much bigger yeah. communities. So, um, you know, we're having smaller families. That's part of it. The other part of it is kids are going off to college quite a bit now from country areas. We're seeing that, mm. particularly the talented footballers. The kids get identified young now in pathways, sent off to Adelaide. They end up playing in the SNFL, completely bypassing senior Colts at their local club other than when they come home on exit. So I think you can kill two birds with one stone here. What I would do is I would go back to the future almost and go back to the old-fashioned firsts, seconds, and then thirds only if competition numbers allow. So you would say your first uh, a competition of 18, three on the bench. If you can't fill a senior team of 18 players, you shouldn't be a club. Mm. Right? That's okay. got to be your first priority. Yep. Um, and once you've got that, then have a look at a seconds competition and make that a combination of perhaps under 17s and perhaps some of our B-grade guys that used to play B-grade in the past, mix them in together. Make that a more family-friendly, family-orientated kind of thing where son can play with father, brother can play with brother, cousin can play with cousin. Yeah. Make it about that at that level. Um, but do that and take some pressure off of the clubs to find more players and buy more players in to keep their clubs afloat. I would much prefer to see that than reducing the, the number of the players on the field in the highest level for each association or each league because I think that it doesn't become footy. I think if you're playing an A-grade competition with 14 players or 12 players, the game changes and it changes too much for my liking. So at the very highest level where the pathway is still relevant, you've got to have your full quota. It's got to be real football. Below that, then you can start to modify down from seconds onward. But that's how I would fix it. Mm. You're being very traditionalist about it all there, Statman. I can I can see very traditionalist. Whereas the flow man is being a bit more looking to the future, trying to incorporate new ideas. Well, I think if we keep the towns going, I reckon that's the key here. Every town wants an identity. And well, that's the correlation between both what you're saying is yeah. keeping the towns going. It has one way absolutely to be the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think there's a lot far greater issues with towns and the support structures they provide than just football. I think football is a really important part. Having netball teams mm. is a very very important part too. Um, the pressure that, um, that having a lack of population in a town that maybe once had a thousand people that now has 500 people, what that pressure puts on keeping a doctor, uh, keeping a hospital in that town, which uh, medical care, having a good school where you can get your kids uh, who maybe have 10 or 12 siblings in the same grade as your child is so that they can get learning opportunities with the teachers with a va- vast degree of experiences. Um, you, we're seeing the lack of that through the systems within our our towns because of population. So I think while we're talking here of addressing the issue of uh, player numbers or whether there's a reserves or not, I think the big issue here is that governments have got to sit down and work out um, where we go with um, not having these uh, numbers of towns. Can we have footy competitions like we had on the far west now, Western Air, where we had four teams play and it was hanging on for grim life. Now they've kept on going by two teams joining it. But where we've got now in the Mallee situation uh, in Victoria, we once upon a time had uh, six or seven teams in that Mallee, eight teams back uh, when we had Barry Willett playing. We had um, all those teams playing. They've all now gone in different directions out to other leagues and left this massive area in the middle um, where a team called Wemmelang Lascelles no longer has an identity, no longer has uh, a football side in those two little towns together. Similarly, we have that situation brewing, I think, in the Midwest of South Australia where we have Minipa and Putra is uh, quite a big chance of um, not having that identity any further given where they're playing this year down with Elliston. So that's my point on this. I think governments haven't worked hard enough and we haven't looked at the issue of uh, government workers uh, being moved out and, and you know, primary industries workers like PERS are in South Australia, agriculture, Victoria workers. The railways, yeah. yeah. Railways workers. Uh, we've lost those railway yeah. lines. You're quite right about it's, railways. It's worth noting on the, the topic of um, Midwest, you, you touched on that. Um, I remember reading an article done by Andrew Bucky Buckham once on the Midwest Football League's website looking at how clubs were formed in the Midwest Football League. And I believe there's 40-odd clubs that used to make up Midwest League six. that were all merged mm. into six teams. And now that league's folded. And that's uh, they've dispersed off into other. Uh, I think you'll find Centrally United is a conglomerate of about eight clubs mm. um, over time. So that just tells you, and this is not a football problem. 
Uh, we have to remember that. This is a, a problem not of football's making. Uh, mm. It is certainly not anyone's mm. fault involved in footy clubs or leagues or whatnot that we're in this predicament. We're in this predicament because uh, the, the population is shrinking in regional areas and we all know the reasons why. So how you adjust to suit is what's up for discussion because the reality is country areas are going to continue to contract and that's unfortunately the case until someone in government actually takes this seriously and has some policies to grow population in regional areas. And small towns in regional areas, not the big Horshams, not the big Mount Gambiers, not the big Port Lincolns. It's about growing um, these small town populations, the 5,000, the 2,000, the 1,000 people towns, mm. getting those little places like Minipa up to 500 people so that Minipa Putra area can support a football team moving forward with four grades and netball teams and so forth. Blow man, you touched on it when you said identity, and I think that's one of the key things, is that in, in your little town, whatever it is, those 40 teams that you mentioned in Midwest, people would have identified with that particular town, that, that club, and when that's gone, where do, where do I go? I, don't, I might not want to go that direction. It becomes, it becomes a very passionate thing. You identify... Um, very much with where you came from and the colours and everything about that club. When it's Worse gone. still, um, some people say that's it for me. Um, yes. When their club yeah. disappears, they they walk away from sport altogether because that was their club um, and they come towards the end of their time anyway. Now seems like a good time to walk away from mm. it. Where uh, That's a bit of a concern as well. But, I mean, I keep coming back to the point that we're, we're talking about more than just a football problem. I mean, when you talk about the uh, identity of a country community... It's the school, it's the hospital, it's the church, it's the football club, the it's bakery. the netball club, it's the bakery, it's the local business. The bank. Yeah. Um, all the of these things bakery. that we've seen, yeah. are, they're, they're under attack and have yeah. been for years. Um, and they're going one by one by one. So um, the football club is just a, another uh, brick in what is a, a rich mortar and tapestry of a wall <laughs> that's falling down. As long as we keep the bakeries, fellas, then I'll yeah. be okay. <laughs> that's the most disappointing thing. When a good vanilla slice bites the dust, I shed a tear. Then that town, that town <laughs> is lost, to the, lost a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we can all agree on that. All right, folks. Guys, thanks so much for coming in and starting this discussion. If you're listening out there, folks, what's your thoughts? Do you agree with the flow man that numbers of science should be reduced to around 12 to 14 or with the stat man that the B-grade competition should be gone? Let us know. Get in touch with us via our Facebook page. Send us an email. You use the email news at flowfm.com.au or send us... A, a private message. Go through our Facebook page, Flow FM Australia. Let's keep this discussion going. It's going to be happening through the sports show right through this year and other times. Be a part of it. Get involved and join us because we don't know what the answer is, but we'd love to get your thoughts. So get us in touch with us here at Flow FM on the Sports Feed.